This episode is all about the clean energy technologies and trends set to take over in 2025, as well as the innovations waiting in the wings, ready for their grand entrance onto the clean energy technology stage. The criteria? Simple. Stuff that means we can stop burning stuff. Creating, moving, storing and using energy in ways that let us live comfortably, build what we need and go where we're going without wrecking the planet or our wallets. So let's unpack what that means for 2025. We've teamed up with Duracell Energy to celebrate their brilliant ecosystem of home energy products and their Platinum Home Owner offer by giving away a Duracell Bunny. To win, simply watch to the end and answer a question about Fully Charged. Today, 12% of total global energy demand and 30% of global electricity demand is met by renewables. And deployment is set to continue at an unprecedented rate. The UK will see the completion of the first of three 1.2 gigawatt phases of the Doggerbank wind farm. The initial phase will boast 95 General Electric Halyard X turbines, each capable of powering 16,000 homes. Meanwhile, China has recently just turned on the world's largest turbine, a staggering 20 megawatt behemoth. But the UK's wind ambitions extend beyond Doggerbank. The first leasing round to include floating wind will conclude in 2025, auctioning seabed rights in the Celtic Sea for 4.5 gigawatts of wind capacity. Floating wind will help more areas of the ocean become suitable for harnessing wind power. UK solar capacity reached 17.2 gigawatts in 2024, and with recent approval of 93 ground-based solar projects, it's likely the UK total will tip over 20 gigawatts this year. The newly formed National Energy Systems Operator, NISO, confirmed clean power by 2030 is indeed feasible. Though critics said the solar target showed a concerning lack of ambition and even betrayed a limited understanding of solar generation and battery energy storage systems. To address the consternation, Ed Miliband, Secretary of State for Energy, has reconvened the Solar Task Force, who will be using 2025 to suss out how to accelerate plans for 50 gigawatts of solar in the UK by 2030. There are now so many more solar options available with ever greater efficiency, more subtle design and lower costs. A 90% reduction in the past decade, no less. We recently featured super efficient pair of Skype panels on the channel and now in commercial operation, it's only a matter of time before they make their way onto residential properties too. Heat pumps remain a hot topic with the Department for Energy Security and Net Zero increasing funding for the boiler upgrade scheme by a further 30 million pounds. The £7,500 heat pump package is now receiving thousands of applications each month. In addition to their efficiency, a lovely 300%, heat pumps are perhaps set to also become the patriotic choice. Homes with a heat pump use 50% less imported energy compared to those with gas boilers. Pair that with solar panels and improved air tightness and the dependence on imported energy will only diminish. Want to maximise homegrown British energy? Then a heat pump is clearly the way forward. Of course, there are alternatives to the humble heat pump, and we hope that channel favourite Tepio will see the boiler upgrade scheme extended to include their ZEB, an electric heat battery solution. We'll be diving into the whole zero carbon heating gambit for both new builds and retrofits in various episodes this year. And this heat pump patriotism needn't just be reserved for homes. There are already huge heat pumps in operation in heat networks across the globe, but to date the challenge has been reaching those higher temperatures required for industrial processes including beer. This year, Hepworth Brewery will be getting its very own heat pump that will use waste steam, something called a turbo claw, and a fancy compressor technology to achieve temperatures of 150 degrees C. And as we look to even higher temperatures and even harder to abate sectors, those two are turning to electrification. Coolbrook, a company based in Finland, have pioneered the electric rotodynamic heater using technology borrowed from rocket science, and it is the only heat electrification technology to decarbonize processes up to 1700 degrees C without burning fossil fuels, and does so with a 90% efficiency, meaning it could be used for steel, cement and aluminium production, as well as chemical refining. I.e. it has the potential to cut global emissions by a whopping 7%, and quickly too, as it can be retrofitted onto existing plants and it will be in commercial scale use this year. Coolbrook, if you're watching, we'd love to chat. As big industries electrify and more data centers demand more energy, while at the same time transmission line deployment struggles to keep pace with generation, the case for co-locating energy generation with consumption grows stronger. 
Not least as despite there being more than 11,000 data centers worldwide, they are very concentrated, meaning local effects on electricity markets can be substantial. This move towards microgrids and decentralized energy will only become more widespread, helping shield both industries and consumers from price fluctuations. We're already experiencing a flavor of this shift with demand-side response programs, which when coupled with super smart home energy technologies help optimize and balance your home energy ecosystem. This is also paving the way for rethinking energy and how we pay and access it. For example, projects such as Ray Valley Solar, the UK's largest community-owned solar park, powers 6,000 homes and keeps 2.6 million pounds in the local economy. In Australia, Narara Eco Village is home to a small dam, a community battery and very efficient solar-powered homes, enabling it to form its own utility and even sell power back to the grid. And with B2G, the benefits of distributed, highly localized and flexible energy systems become even more acute thanks to the big old battery on wheels that EVs represent. Australia will be the first market to switch on B2G and it's only a matter of time before other nations follow suit. My Energy plans to launch its AC V2G charger this year, which we are extremely excited to see. However, this is a grid code minefield and we have a lot of questions which we will be trying to answer in upcoming episodes. Whilst we're on the subject of EVs, despite the flim flam on whether the rate of EV sales has slowed or fallen off a cliff, EVs are here to stay and are indeed now so capable that other sectors are electrifying with far less controversy and fanfare. Hydrofoiling boats such as the Candela P12 will become a very normal part of public transport networks. The world's largest electric ferry that can carry 2,000 passengers and 256 cars will set sail, and the Ocean Bird electric carrier ship will be fitted with its wings. Buses are also electrifying without a fuss. The UK is now the number one market in Europe for electric buses, and this year London will welcome new tram-like buses with pantograph charging, Coventry and Warwickshire will get another 64 electric buses in a bid to make them the first all-electric bus city, and UK bus operator Go Ahead is investing £500 million in the production of over a thousand electric buses. Predictable routes, low running costs and minimal maintenance, the bus world is proving that going electric just makes sense. And on the micromobility side, the UK could be set to legalise scooters in 2025 too. MG have said they will launch their first car with a solid state battery in 2025. The L6 Saloon will feature an 133 kilowatt hour light year battery, which claims to double the energy density to 368 watts per kilo, resulting in an official range of 673 miles on China's light duty vehicle test cycle. The reality is that this is probably semi-solid state rather than full solid state, but regardless, solid state is likely to be the battery buzzword of the year as we near commercial production of this technology. But news of cheaper, more energy dense batteries of all shapes, sizes and chemistries will continue to proliferate. BYD, for example, will launch its next generation LFP blade battery that could be capable of 800 kilometers of range. And could the BYD Seagull with cheaper sodium ion batteries finally arrive in the UK? The real excitement lies in grid scale energy storage. By 2025, global capacity is set to grow by 80 gigawatts, an eight-fold increase from 2021. Pumped hydro storage of course still dominates, providing 90% of current storage, while lithium-ion batteries, thanks to a 90% cost reduction over the past decade, account for most stationary storage deployment in recent years. Sodium-ion is making its way into the mix, but alternatives are also gaining traction. Solutions such as vanadium redox flow batteries, which boast long-term durability and no cycle limits, as well as thermal storage technologies such as molten salts or aluminium, especially when paired with concentrated solar power, are rising in popularity. China has just connected its first gravity battery to the grid, and UK-based Invinity will soon start operating its vanadium flow endurium long-duration energy storage solution. We hope to visit the team in Scotland very soon. And so it seems that electrification of everything is totally possible, but it hinges on diversification, both in terms of geography and range of solutions. It's no news that 70% of global clean tech manufacturing is concentrated in China, nor that its solar PV generation alone is on course to surpass the current total electricity demand of the US by the early 2030s. This concentration poses challenges. China's economies of scale make competition fierce, making survival for companies like Northvolt hard, whilst their story create doubts about the clean energy transition's viability. Supply chain reliance on marine choke points like the Strait of Malacca adds vulnerability, while rising LNG capacity in 2025 may undercut renewable energy investments, particularly in emerging markets with higher deployment costs. 
Emerging economies hold 70% of renewable energy potential and 50% of transition critical materials, yet receive just 15% of clean energy investment. Distributing manufacturing to regions like Africa and Southeast Asia is crucial for balance, equity and maximizing renewable generation. So despite barriers like fossil fuel subsidies, which remain at record levels, and slow planning processes, the economic case for clean energy, jobs, energy security and sovereignty and stable costs is undeniable. So as tiffs on tariffs and targets continue to be contentious, I hope that economic arguments become so indisputable as to ensure that even the harshest of critics may struggle to ignore the benefits. As electrification of everything expands, efficiency and affordability can drive its momentum. Just ask anyone with an air fryer. Let us know what you think in the comments. Please do like and subscribe. And if you have been, thank you for watching. We're really excited to partner with Duracell Energy to showcase their amazing renewable energy solutions. If you want to reduce your energy bills and join the renewable energy transition, installing home battery storage and solar panels at home is a great way to start. Duracell Energy's ecosystem of products typically partners with solar panels, but they can be just as effective without it, particularly for electric vehicle owners or anyone looking to take control of their energy. And with Duracell Energy's Platinum Homeowner offer, viewers can get a custom service that pairs you with top quality products and the best installers in your area. Your installation also comes with a 20-point check, a six-month performance review, system health checks at three and 10-year periods, and outstanding local UK customer support every step of the way. Duracell Energy's batteries, inverters and DV chargers work together on one easy-to-use app. With features like dynamic tariff integration and grid services, you'll be able to maximise your return. Ready to get started? You can get your quote today. And don't forget, we're also giving away a Duracell Energy Bunny in every episode. Just answer the question about Fully Charged by following the link in the description. Good luck!